The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is on the air and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over 10 insects that you definitely want in your vegetable garden this year, as well as nematodes. Are they good for the garden? Are they bad for the garden? We'll give you all the details on that, as well as author and cookbook author, that is, uh, Jill Weinger will be with us. Plus, your garden questions, the hour's jam-packed. Let's start it right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, around the country, around the world. We're so happy you've tuned in via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, your actual radio, under the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com radio tab, in-studio video, or replay of the show in podcast form. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is where you can find over 1,400 garden videos, short and long format, as well as in-studio replays of every show that we have done. There is a variety of different ways. Uh, the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is Power Planter. P- planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter what soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel in the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA. We offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. We're going to use our power planter. Uh, very, yes, we are with yeah. uh, today. So uh, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us. Uh, they all revolve around the IB Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Whether you've got a question or your plant has a question, you can send us a, a question. Yeah. Um, you can, on the IB Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees, shields, pruned and damaged surfaces. For use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, this product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivorganics.com 3-in-1 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivorganics.com text line, and that's 414 414- Three six eight nine three one one. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at four one four three six eight nine three one one. Or you can text us at four one four three six eight ninety three eleven. I'll give that text number one more time. Four one four three six eight. Nine three one one, and you can text us anytime uh, you want uh, with your question. Uh, we're going to get into the program. We've got ten bugs that you absolutely, definitely want to have in your garden. We're going to talk about what they are, uh, the benefits of what some of them do, and how we can attract them to our garden. Uh, what people don't realize uh, that may be novice or new to gardening is that you need bugs in your garden. Oh, yeah, definitely. You want those bugs. There's very many, there's a lot of beneficial bugs, and there is also uh, not not so good bugs as well. Um, one thing I want to note here is that the good bugs, the insect allies, they hate dust. So it's good to keep the, the soil covered. Now, allies. You, de- de- what? Those are the good bugs. That's the good so bugs. Okay, so I just wanted to be clear that we are all So there are allies in the garden. Um, so you want to keep your soil covered, use mulch, um, Make, mulch is awesome for many reasons. It re- retains moisture. We it, talk about it every week. Right, uh, it mulch your soil. It helps eliminate we- uh, weeds, and it attracts uh, worms to your garden and also good microorganisms that are going to break that down. Um, so that's one thing. Also, using chemical pesticides is not good for the good bugs, um, especially like bees, because th- those... A lot of those chemical pesticides contain what's called neonicotinoids, and those are very harmful to our pollinator friends. Well, what, well, the thing that people need to be aware of, that if you have some bad bugs in your garden, 
and you have good bugs in your garden. That's that's a good e- that's a balanced ecosystem. If you have you know one eats the other, uh, what is what's bad is when gardeners go to the garden center and find a chemical that has the picture of that bad bug on it to use to kill it. That chemical kills all the bugs. It doesn't just focus on that one individual species. It wipes out everything, good and bad. Mm-hmm. And people need to be aware of that. That you are doing harm. There are some times when it needs to be used to kill the bugs, uh, the bad bugs. But uh, if you have an equal balanced ecosystem, that certainly does uh, make a difference. So let's talk about some of these bad or some of these good bugs that you want in your garden. Right. So bees. That's the one that does a lot of the pollinating. So what you can do to attract them is plant perennials, colorful annuals, and lots of fruits and veggies. Um, bee, bees will come if you invite them. So you definitely, the flowering plants are what is ideal. Uh, secondly is ladybugs. Ladybugs uh, are a great pest uh, deterrent. They, their prey is aphids, white flies, mites, fleas, Colorado potato beetles. And the neat thing about the ladybug is a ladybug can consume around 5,000 aphids during their lifetime. Fun fact. Uh, aphids are the tick of the plant world. They will suck the juices out of your plant and weaken the immune system of your plant. That's why we want to uh, keep them away. Uh, also, it's okay if you don't weed all the weeds out of your garden. Some of these bad bugs find weeds and use them as a host plant. And if you was to remove all of those weeds, those bugs would find the vegetation in which you're growing to be and use as a host plant. So another one is praying mantises. Now that is not something very familiar in the upper Midwest portions of the United States. It is, um, it's, it's more of the southern, central to southern United States. Yeah, East I've Coast. never seen a, a praying mantis. Uh, I'm from yeah. southern, Illinois, southern Illinois and that was a very big uh, insect to have in the garden, very beneficial. Uh, what what is some of the things that they e- eat for those they who are in eat areas? Things like the the bad caterpillars, moths, the bad beetles, and crickets. Um, and they're attracted by tall grasses and shrubs, uh, tall tall flowers like cosmos, zinnias, marigolds, and dill. Uh, mantis can turn their heads 180 degrees, so they can look forward <laughs> and then they can turn around and look directly <clears throat> behind them. That's that's crazy. I mean, not crazy, but it's crazy. Unique aspect it's of unique. Uh, 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 nature. Yeah. Spiders are another thing that many people hate. I don't want spiders. I hate spiders. Spider- spiders are very beneficial in the garden. Um, they prey on a we- wide variety of bad bugs, aphids, roaches, uh, grasshoppers, mosquitoes, fruit flies. Um, so that's very beneficial. And in your home, they also eat a lot of bad bugs, too. Yeah, so it's okay to have spiders in your house. Spiders are our friends. Yeah, even yeah. if people don't like them. just That's our little thing there. Yeah, ground beetles. Ground beetles, uh, they'll eat slugs, caterpillars, two big problems that people face yeah. in their garden, as well as ants. So it, um, that's a good thing, Colorado beetles. Uh, cutworms. How do we attract ground beetles? Since we're since it will eat the the slugs and the caterpillars, what do we do to attract them? So you can plant um, evening primrose, am- amaranthus, and clover. So a lot of people have clover in their garden, in their soil, or in their yard, or in the yard, and they so try to get rid of it. And they try to get rid yeah. of it. If you leave that cl- clover, you'll have the ground beetles. Ground beetles are typically active only at, at night. <coughs> Excuse me. At, at night, and <coughs> then. Uh, they will kind of go into their their uh, they'll sleep during the day. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the bracket and wasp. Okay. Because that is something that um, we'll use the tomato or tobacco hornworm, or um, also sometimes the looper. If you have a cabbage looper, we don't get those here, but I think in the south they do. Um, they'll, they'll attract those and they'll make them their hosts, and then they'll make their cocoons on those hornworms and those loopers, and then then those, those bugs are no good. Um, so that's one thing. And they also prey on aphids. Um, so they're attracted by, like, yarrow. And I just learned about yarrow. Yarrow is a uh, very beneficial herb for your for your blood and your circulatory system. Is that something that can be easily grown? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then dill. If you grow dill, you want to be careful if we're growing dill. We've talked about that. Lemon balm and parsley. So it seems like a lot of herbs mm-hmm. and, like, flowering 
taller flower and plants attract a lot of bright these. Bright colors as well. Yeah. Uh, w- let's let's look at another There's one There's aphid midges. So I guess these are... Um, they focus on the, the eating the aphids. They eat the aphids. Poor aphids. Now, <laughs> if you're a friend of the aphids, every single one of these <laughs> insects is going to eat the aphids. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, dill, plants with pollen, pollen and nectar. That's the thing is, like, if you have plants that are attracting the pollinators, like the bees and the monarchs, they're going to also typically attract a lot of these good bugs. Um, so that's good. Right. Uh, another one is the green lace wing. Yeah, so these are um, these are co- cool looking if you ever see one. I would say you should definitely look those up because they have these really pretty li- wings. But they eat the, <laughs> the aphids, uh, white flies, mealybugs, caterpillars, and then uh, pest moths. And, and again, these are all bugs that you want in your garden that you can attract to your garden very easily. You don't have to have any major reconstruction of your landscape in order to get them in. You may already also have these in your garden, and you just don't know it. These A lot of times these insects don't make their presence known. They just help balance the ecosystem. Right. Um, so then the neat thing about la- uh, lace wings is that they're attracted by dandelion and also coriander and dill and uh, a variety of flowers. But people don't realize how beneficial dandelions are to your yard. Now, they're not beneficial to your grass necessarily, but they're beneficial because they attract these good bugs. They attract pollinators. They're the first food for bees in the spring. Um, and then if you don't like them, you can dig them up and you can use the dandelion roots for all sorts of things and the greens. So definitely consider what you're doing to the dandelions when you're harming the rest of the ecosystem. And another thing, for those of you who hate to have dandelions in your yard, I understand that. You want to have a pleasing yard. Dandelion seeds can travel up to five miles. So just because you've cleaned your little yard out doesn't mean, and everybody on your block has, five miles away those seeds can come over and introduce themselves on your property. Yeah, see, so you're not really doing much anyway. Okay, so soldier beetles, these are cool looking. Aphids, of course, they eat the aphids. Yeah, they eat grasshoppers. I don't know if grasshoppers are necessarily, or grasshopper eggs. Yeah. Um, And then soft body insects. Which is important. Right. A lot of these soft body insects can do detrimental damage to your vegetation in which you're trying to grow. So they're attracted by zinnia marigolds. Which is some pretty flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely, like, if you're you're only going to grow, like, a few flowers... You want to grow something like zinnias, marigolds, um, cosmos. Those are the flowers that grow taller, and those seem to attract these... Very vibrant colors. Very vibrant colors, and they seem to attract these good bugs. What's, what's, what's some other ones here? Um, so there are the mealybug destroyer. What do you think that eats? Mealybug destroyer. <laughs> that, the, the, the roly-polies. Yeah, the roly-polies. That, this bug can, destroys the roly-polies. Yeah. Okay. Or here we call them potato bugs. Potato bugs, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, another regional thing, what they call them. But those are attracted by sunflowers, uh, dill, fennel, goldenrod. So it seems to be a trend, as you can see. Um, predatory mites. So there's different good and bad mites. Predatory mites eat the spider mites. Spider mites feed on your tomatoes. So that's something to keep in mind is that it might look like one thing, but it might be beneficial versus another thing that it doesn't look like. Yeah, having a balanced ecosystem in your garden is key. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about, those are just 10 of the beneficial insects. There's many, many more. When we come back, we're going to talk about what nematodes are. Are they good for the garden? Are they bad for the garden? And and what we need to be aware of. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can always send us an email, twvgshow at gmail.com. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces fifty to one hundred percent more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4-foot by 4-foot area. DripGarden.com. 
Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Squirrels getting in your bird feeder? It's time to spice it up. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products. From plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. If squirrels continue to get into your bird feeder, look for a feeder that contains a baffle. Or look for bird seed that's been treated with chili powder. Birds cannot taste the heat, but squirrels can and they will go elsewhere. You can also treat your own bird seed with chili powder. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more for information, visit EagleGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EagleGardenSystems.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. This is horticulturist Jessica Walliser from SavvyGardening.com and KDKA Radio in Pittsburgh. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird.
Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, friendly products based on research and innovation. After 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolid or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically... Your feed your family. That is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. Nematodes are uh, something that many people are unfamiliar with. If they're good, if they're bad, or even what are they and how they can benefit or not benefit your garden. So what are nematodes? And there's two different, I guess, categories, Holly, of nematodes. One, we're going we're gonna to focus on the garden soil type of nematodes. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, uh, like, parasitical nematodes that you can get in your body or something like that. I don't know much about it. I'm not a doctor. Um, so we're talking about the garden nematodes. Okay. Okay, so they're often referred to as roundworms. They're not closely related to tree worms. Tree worms. They're a multicellular insect with smooth unsegmented bodies so that means that they're like tiny little worms that are very smooth so we can physically see these um to a certain level yeah they're not but yeah not really okay okay so typically what they do is they yeah what's the what's their what what do they do what do we they're they're kind of parasitic so they're they're a parasite okay they're going to um feed on things like roots they're going to feed on the inside structure of the plants um, and they usually like to eat the uh, the foliage and the flowers, but they do it from the inside. Okay, so they're cons- it, it, it goes inside of the plant and eats what it needs to to survive. Yeah. So, so the ones that attack our bodies are the same. They um they get into your immune system, or they can ha- harm or harm your immune system. From the inside of your body, so they do that from the inside of their, the plants. They they have these like sharp teeth, even though they're super tiny. They have these sharp teeth, mm-hmm. and then they eat the cell walls of the plant. Okay. So, so, but they do it through the soil. So, like, if you have nematodes in your soil, then that's how they eat your plants, and they're those are the bad ones. Do we know how s- nematodes get into our soil? Um. So they can they move from. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> They spread from um, kind of like anything. They can spread from the if they're on your tools, your boots. Your you animals. bought a plant that has it. You brought yeah. it in, plant in your garden. They will create an ecosystem and spread uh, reproductively in your garden that way. Yeah, and they're going to prey on more of the sad, like the the not healthy plants. Okay, so your weak plants. So mm-hmm. as we've talked about on the program over and over again, hydration is a, a, a and nutrient dense plants are healthy plants that can fight off diseases just like a human body. If you're not in a healthy, high level of uh, hydration or whatever you want to call it, your body is more susceptible to diseases and colds. Same holds true to a plant. If you see a plant that's dehydrated or wilting because of uh, lack of water, for whatever reason, insects and nematodes and other bugs can sense the weakness of that plant and they seem to magnetize themselves towards it. Right. So, okay. Yep, that's correct. So, what you want to keep in mind also is that if you see a plant that looks droopy, or if you see a, a bunch of plants that look droopy, um, you might have nematodes. It kind of depends. There could be a few different things. If it's yellowing, it could be a number of things. But if it's yellowing and you know your soil is good, you're not you're not overwatering your soil. It could be nematodes. Okay. Because they eat since they eat the inside of cell walls. You're not physically seeing. Oh, that is an aphid, for example, right. on the plant. No, you're not. You're not going to physically see them. Okay. Um, on the plants because they, they do their damage. And also, under. would whenever you see what the the aphid ha- or the the nematode has done, is it more of once you've seen what it di- has done, it's already too late? Mm, not necessarily. Okay, so there is some rever- you, you can be reactive well, to it. Actually, no, it is already it, too. Late. Okay, so it's already too late once yeah. the plant has shown symptoms or signs of destruction from the internal portions of the plant. Right. Um, so the best thing also is to make sure your soil is well draining. 
because they can they don't travel very far in the soil themselves, but they travel far in like puddled water. So, so like a bog type of mm-hmm, right. So you want to make sure your soil is well well draining, and you want the soil to be moist, but not like soaked continually. And also, you don't want like if you have clay soil, you want to try to break that up so that your soil well is well draining. And, and whenever we have that healthy soil. It, it's less likely that the it's it's more likely the plants will not be as susceptible or the nematodes won't be as effective on the plants mm-hmm. right. if we have a healthy soil. So the other thing is is good to know nematodes don't like the sun. They don't like to be exposed to the sunlight. The sunlight kills them. Okay, so if we have partial shade, boggy, wet soil in the corner of the garden, that's more of the in- environment in which nematode is going to be successful in living rather than an open, full sun, damp soil we have uh, in a different portion. That's of the correct. Okay. So if you think you have nematodes, you're going you're gonna to pull those plants up. You're not going to compost them. You're not going to put them in the in the road for the city. You're not going to the trash do whatever. Yeah, put them directly into the trash, okay? Those are now landfill plants. You don't want to burn them, anything like that. So you want to do that. Then you want to turn your soil over. You can use a spade or whatever. You can till it whatever you want to do, and then that will expose them to the sunlight, and then that way that kills them off. Okay, so you're uh, exposing to the atmosphere, sun, that's how we're going to get rid of them if we do have them. Um, and and there the signs will show that we may be experiencing that based on the conditions of the plants. Right. So then um, ne- the beneficial nematoids will attack things like weevils, the um, different borers, cutworms, and then what are called web worms, which are uh, c- commonly found in sod, and then cinch bugs and white grubs. So oh, before we go any further, we, we've talked about the bad nematodes, and then there's good nematodes. That's correct. Just like bad people and good people, living all in the same area. <laughs> yes. That, that's what we're looking right. at. Right. Okay. So, but the good nematodes don't, don't do anything to the bad nematodes. Bad nematodes don't do anything to good nematodes. It's like they're just on their own separate planes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with that, you just want to keep in mind, there's nothing you can, you can do to, um, to attract either. I mean, you can do things to detract them. Like we'd mentioned, if you have like a, a corner of yard that doesn't get a lot of sunlight, you know, it may have some there, but, um, the good thing about the good nematodes is that they attacked the insects by injecting a deadly bacteria, or then they use them as a parasite, so they're like, or they are a parasite, and then they use them as their host. Okay. So they are, like, they're a very much a parasite. So that's, and and we have bad things in our soil. We have good things in our soil. Some of the bad, th- some of the good things in our soil combat the bad things. But in this instance and situation, the good nematodes leave the bad nematodes alone. The bad nematodes leave the good nematodes alone. But the good nematodes attack other stuff. Okay. So it's kind of like. Uh, whatever. So, so nematodes, <laughs> it may be something that you were not familiar with uh, or even knew that that terminology existed in your yard or garden, but we wanted to make you aware because as uh, a model of our program here, we want to educate uh, you about things that are going in your garden. We can, If we can be a little more educated each day, we become better people in whatever field or hobby that we have. Correct. Now, are you looking to control common insect pests other than using nematodes like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles, and their larvae without harming the good insects? Phylum Bioproducts does just that with potent and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both the adult and larvae stages of susceptible pests. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve the control rates you would like without doing the harm to the rest of the environment. You can visit phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, Jill Wenger will be with us, blogger and homesteader. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. 
Power plants or earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight-line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. New, new natural healing ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, to container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. Do you use mulch in your garden? If not, you really should start using it as soon as possible. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Mulch is one of the top tools in which you can use in your garden to get the best results from what you're growing. How does mulch work? It's very beneficial as it retains moisture and suppresses weeds. Mulch can be a variety of different materials that you can bring into your garden. Shredded leaves or unshredded leaves in the fall, if you bring in enough in, you can have enough mulch for most of the growing season in the summer. You can use pine needles. They do not make your soil acidic and they work very well for perennial beds. You can use chemical-free and seed-free grass clippings. Seed-free as the plants are not going to seed, so you're not introducing seeds into your garden. But chemical-free as if you do have your lawn treated or you treat your lawn with a chemical weed and feed, that chemical can stay with the grass clipping and introduced into your garden when you water and kill your broadleaf plants or greatly disform them. Even in a compostable form, years later, that chemical can still be active and affect the plants in which you're growing. You can use straw. That is a very well-known mulch to use. But anything that you use, we want to mimic what nature does in the forest floor. It protects it, keeps the soil healthy. By covering the soil, you're keeping the microbial life healthy and active all year long. And having a healthier soil is a more productive garden when it's time to grow. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it. Tomatosnaps.com. World's Coolest Rain Gauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5 in 1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. So it is the unofficial start of summer, which means it's Memorial Day weekend, and it's time to get your warm weather crops in the ground. But what if you don't have warm weather crops to put in the ground because you didn't start any? Well, we have the answer for you. 
Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center has all sorts of garden starts from you. Anything from herbs, vegetables, perennials, annuals, flowers. Natives and bulk material in order to get your raised bed or additives to your garden ready to go. They even have straw if you want to use that for mulching. You can find everything at BlueMills.com. You can visit BlueMills, 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton, or call 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics uh, 3 one Plant Guard Hotline and head to Wyoming to bring in our next guest. Jill Winger is a blogger of the Prairie Homestead and author of the Prairie Homestead Cookbook. It's Jill's mission to help modern folks create a richer, slower, more meaningful life through this crazy, beautiful thing we call modern homesteading. She lives on a 67-acre prairie homestead with her husband and three children who know, who, and who knows how many farm animals. Welcome to the program, Jill. Hey, guys. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to to, obvi- to join us on the program and enlighten us about some items in which many of our guests, or many of our listeners, or at least some of them, uh, may not be familiar with. Yeah, it should be fun. So let's start with how did you get into homesteading, and is that is that how you and your husband grew up? Because we hear stories about all oh, of this. Uh, I grew up in the city, but then I became a homesteader. How, how did your story begin? Mm-hmm. So my story was kind of along those lines. Um, neither my husband nor I grew up in a rural lifestyle. Um, but for both of us, I think me especially, it's like was in my blood the, from the day I was born. So like literally I was three years old asking my parents if we could move to the country. Why didn't we live in the country? Why didn't we have farm animals? Like I've just been really weird on that account like since birth. Um but yeah, I was raised as a typical kind of nineties child, little house in a little suburb, like nothing, nothing country. Um, and so the progression started happening when I turned eighteen. I decided I wanted a career in the horse industry. I moved twelve hundred miles away to Wyoming to pursue that. Uh, long story short, met my husband and got married, and we decided our first house would be this tumble-down farmstead, you know, 40 miles from nowhere, and that's kind of the birth of where this idea of homesteading came from for us. Okay, great. Now, even if you live in a studio apartment in a, in a high-rise in the middle of a busy city, how can one use that to be a modern homesteader? Yeah, great question. So for me, homesteading is really beyond just having property or having a certain type of animal or a milk cow or whatever. It's really a mindset of being more self-sufficient and really shifting from being just a consumer to a producer. And so you can do that regardless of where you live, you know, like you said, even in an apartment. So I recommend for folks who can't move or can't get to the country, um, just start with the food. You know, how can you produce more of your own food? How can you go, if you can't produce it yourself, go straight to the source, work with farmers, go to farmers markets. And then you can take it back to your kitchen and really learn how to prepare it. And that's not only going to reduce the chemicals and the preservatives that you're getting in boxed foods or processed foods, but it's really, really fulfilling and satisfying. Okay, that's that's really, you know, a really good point, the consumer to the producer. Um, now let's talk about your book, The Prairie Homestead Cookbook. Can you tell us more about it, what's in it, anything you want to highlight in there? Yeah, so I, the book came out uh, April 2nd, so it's about two months old. It's literally like um, a baby having a baby. It's like a long process. But I created that book, and there's lots of cookbooks out there. I'm like, does the world really need another cookbook? And I ultimately came to the answer that, yes, it does, because I found myself kind of a little bit disinterested in a lot of the farm-to-fork cookbooks that I was reading just because they had some obscure ingredients and things that were very hard to find. And here in Wyoming... We don't have a super uh, fancy local foods movement. We're still kind of in the infancy of that. So we have basic foods, and I can grow basic foods. And so I really wanted to show people how you can cook from scratch some meals with real foods and none of the exotic ingredients that are hard for a lot of us to find. Now, I, I want to go back uh, to the homesteading aspect of uh, your lifestyle. Many people think of a homestead having to be very large, uh, but you're only on 67 acres, and people have homesteads of a quarter acre. Uh, mm-hmm. What is something of the homestead that you find very fascinating that you didn't realize was 
part of the homes uh, part of being a homestead er. Yeah. So just to clarify your question, just what what is something you can do in the homesteading realm that maybe would not be obvious? Yeah. 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 Um, I think for me, it always has come back to the food. Um, because if you think about it, even if someone is a commercial producer of food or, you know, vegetables, milk, dairy, meat, whatever, or a home producer, you have to know how to prepare that food. Uh, and that's a huge part. So you can have the most beautiful garden, but if you don't really know what to do with those vegetables that you're growing, it's going to be all for naught. So if you can learn those old fashioned kitchen skills, you know, taking whole ingredients and turning them into edible, delicious meals, like that's a huge aspect of homesteading that really doesn't have anything to do with necessarily keeping chickens or milking a cow, but that's a really important piece. Now, you grow, uh, you're in Zone 5 up there in Wyoming, uh, and it's a very cold climate, and we're here uh, at our flagship station in Zone 5 in Milwaukee. Uh, mm -hmm. You, We typically don't have as harsh weather as it seems as you did. You had s snow in early May. How do you garden in a very clo cold climate? What is some go-to tips that you exercise in order to guarantee that you're going to have something before the cold hits again on these warm weather crops? Yeah, well, and sometimes <laughs> it's harder than others. So we actually had snow like eight inches uh, four days ago. Like, it's still melting. It's just insane. Um, but we still get a pretty good garden in and harvest it every single year. So two things. The biggest thing, I think, is it's kind of obvious, but just knowing your first and last frost dates and, and really paying attention to those. I, I know a lot of folks who move here and they the weather here usually warms up to the 60s and 70s the first part of May. And it's so deceiving because you want to be outside and you want to be planting. Um, but the, you know our last frost date is not till like June 1st. So you got to pay attention because the snow will usually come after that warm up. Uh, and so you can do things like greens, you know, plant some kale seeds or put in some really hardy springtime seeds but that's about it so pay attention to what your recommended frost dates are um, and try not to deviate from that just so you don't have heartbreak over frozen vegetables and then the other one this has kind of been a more recent lesson is if you can pull on any local gardening resource or locally owned gardening stores for both information or for purchasing your plants you know use those resources because I realized my first few years here, we don't have a lot of great local gardening stores. We just have a handful. But I would go to the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot, and they would have plants that, you know, they said were fine for Zone 5, but they never actually really thrived here. Um, and it wasn't until I started talking to really knowledgeable local gardeners. They're like, you know, you have to pick plants that are really rated for our type of Zone 5 or that are really been researched to thrive in our area because what they might have at a big box store is technically zone five, but it's, it's not quite as um, targeted. So once I started really focusing on what are the native species, I'm not trying to get too exotic, because exotic just does not thrive when you're this harsh of a climate, that has helped us have more success. And now are you growing under low tunnels, greenhouses, high tunnels, or are you just being aptly exposed to the elements with no protection on the plants whatsoever? Yeah, right now we're just exposed. Um, we talk about doing a greenhouse every year, and I think it's in the cards maybe in the next couple years. Our biggest holding back at this point is we get uh, 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, like sustained winds during the winters, and you know snow loads and blowing snow. So some of those cute little greenhouse kits, like they would be demolished in a week. <laughs> so we've got to figure out how to make a greenhouse that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, but is going to be able to really withstand the elements because it's brutal out here. Sounds like a beautiful place in the middle of summer, but that's, uh, the winter yeah. doesn't sound too much uh, too fun there. It's drastically different, yeah, from season to season. We're talking with uh, Jill Winger. She is the author and blogger at the Prairie Homestead. Now, a lot of gardeners, canners, homesteaders can get burnt out mid-season, end-of-season, or have time management issues. How do you deal with those problems? That's a great question because that's a very real issue. Um, so I think the biggest piece of that is, you know, comparison. And it, it's really easy to compare because there's so many amazing homesteaders and such or farmers or gardeners on social media. But the comparison can often drive you into a place of doing too much or doing things you don't really want to do, but you're just doing because you think you should because that's what 
all the good gardeners do or that's what all the good homesteaders do. So I think the first piece of avoiding burnout is really asking yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I planting this? Why am I growing, you know, growing this crop? Is it because I love it and it makes me feel excited or is it just because I'm doing it out of obligation for some, you know, unknown standard of what the perfect gardener is? And so that, you know, has helped me to get clear on the things I really want to do and the things I can just cut out. And then the other part of that is just, you know, you can't do it all. And especially as homesteaders, we're trying to live an old-fashioned lifestyle in a very modern world with lots of other things and responsibilities that we have to do. So we can't just, well, most of us can't just be in the garden or on the barnyard all day long. So it's this element of doing what you can and just being okay with saying no or leaving the rest and just finding a place of peace in that. Let's talk about your book a little bit. What was the inspiration behind the book? Where was the aha moment you said, I'm going to write this book, we're going to do it, and this is the reasons why? So it's really, I'd say the, the, the most inspiration is just, you know, we've been on this homestead for 10 years, so it's literally this, uh, not, not necessarily a journal, but a dialogue of our life here on the homestead, and it's everything we've learned and everything we've discovered, and um, there's lots of personal tips and tricks along the way because we are living it. You know, we're in the middle of it for real. Um, but, you know, I really wanted to inspire people and give other people the tools to know they can cook from scratch without it being complicated. Because, you know, even though I love this type of lifestyle and this type of cooking, I don't have eight hours a day to spend in the kitchen, and I think most people don't either. So it was this idea of I want to, you know, like you said, the light bulb came on, and I'm like, I need a handbook that can inspire people to ditch the boxes and the processed foods and the canned foods uh, and get back to the basics and they don't have to feel like it's this burden to cook this way for their families. And, and that's the thing. we got. I, I'm just picking a number. The last 25 years, convenience have, has surpassed um, healthiness and family time and we can put it in the microwave and we can eat and we can watch TV while we do it and that's the way that the life is now. When, when I grew up, and, and I'm sure you're probably very similar to this, we actually sat around the dinner table. There was not a TV in front of the, the dinner table, and whether we wanted to or not, we had to talk. Yes, yes. Uh, where, can we, where can we find your book at? Where is the locations our listeners uh, can go? And, and your website. And your website, yeah. Yes, so I always recommend if you have a local bookstores, go to local bookstores and support them and get their book there. If not, you can find it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And then you can follow me on the web. I'm all over social media and my blog, and it's just kind of the hub of everything with lots of freebies and good content is theprairiehomestead.com. Uh, the book is The Prairie Homestead Cookbook. If you want something that will impress your friends and family, uh, you need to pick up this book because there's a lot of great recipes. There's a lot of other things in the book that will help you, even if you're just an urban uh, apartment dweller. There's things in which you can glean off to increase and, and, and make your life easier. And we greatly appreciate the time you've taken, Jill, to, to share and enlighten us, uh, not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Absolutely. It was a blast. Thanks for having me, guys. And when we come back, it is going to be your garden questions and our garden answers. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can always send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can always visit the website at wisconsinvegetablegardener.com anytime, day or night. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit BobX.com. B-O-B-B. 
B-E-E-X dot C-O-M. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the East Side and Greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh juice, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available. Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful, tasty peaches and juicy, sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin, tree-ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the backbreaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organic 301 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces, 
for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 3-in-1 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the Instant Access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414 414- Three six eight nine three one one. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at four one four three six eight nine three one one. Fifty. Uh, Christy asks, "How did your leeks do last year? You planted in the square foot garden method, and the answer is they did okay. And the reason why they did okay, leeks, I forget, I think it's like nine per square foot is right. what is what you need to have. Uh, and we were better off with the four four per square foot because the the stems were able to bulk up and actually do better. Now the ones that we did nine square in nine per square feet, they did fine, but they just didn't get as bulky because it, it, they were too." Uh, close to one another, and they competed uh, for nutrients. So uh, go nine, go four per square foot on your leeks, and you will be fine. Ruth wants to know, is there anything I can use that will really kill thistles in my veggie garden? I've been digging them. It only gets worse. I want. To, I don't want to destroy the soil. I don't, so I don't want to use anything super harmful. Uh, Biosafe, biosafe.net, it offers a d- diverse array of eco-friendly products to support all, a- all facets of plant life. Um, so if you save 10%, on your next order using coupon code TWVG at checkout. And we use it, and I used it uh, the other day. Uh, we had some grass growing up in the in the garden. It's been really wet. I can't get in there and dig the roots out like I want to. So I took and mowed it down and sprayed it very uh, with the recommended rate of BioSafe. Killed that back, and we're going to call our cardboard mulch it and plant our tomatoes in that area. It works very well, as well as spot spray thistles in the yard. It works really good on that. So TWVG at checkout at biosafe.net, save 10%. And they also have uh, uh, health, uh, environmentally friendly cleaning products for your house as well. What's our next question? You can ask him. Uh, I found worms in my containers. Uh, I didn't put them there. Do, uh, uh, you said in a video that do not add worms to your container. Should I remove them? No, that's okay. Um, so worms sometimes find their way into containers, whether through the drainage holes or if it's near a garden bed or whatnot. The eggs in which the, the soil eggs, you put in. Right. So if they're in there and they're they're moving around, they're doing their thing, they're okay. They're not going to overpopulate their area. Um, you could always put some leaves around the top of that to feed them. Otherwise, you can just leave them as is. Yeah, and, and the bigger the container, the better, but do not add worms. Um, if nature wants them there, they will go there. I have a question about putting egg, uh, an egg in the hole when you plant your tomatoes. Have you heard of this? Why do people do this, and should I do this? Okay, well, I, the premise is it's used as a fertilizer because there's some... They, they're putting the whole egg physically in the bottom of the hole at yeah. the time of planting. So, so I wouldn't do it. The egg will smell as, as it rots. Um, animals can dig it up. The shell will, will not break down for this year's growing season uh, to feed the plant. Just use an all-balanced fertilizer. If you want to use your egg shells, Joey, how do you use your egg uh, shells? You de- uh, dry them out in the microwave for about a minute and then pulverize them to a powder, and then you can include them into your compost pile and or at the time of planting you can mix them in the soil. And uh, the, the egg shell is calcium, which is an, a, mac- a micronutrient of which the plant needs. Uh, and in a powdered form, it will break down to a point where the microbial life is able to uh, break it down even more for the plant to uptake it during this particular growing season. If you was to just take the eggshell, crumple it, and throw it in the hole, the eggshell is going to take about 18 months to break down to a usable form of calcium. So it, it serves you no purpose in that. Uh, you could just throw it in your compost pile if you wanted to, but don't just, just use the egg for breakfast. Uh, don't put the egg in the bottom of the hole at the time of planting. Uh, it's going to cause rodents and animals to get in there and dig it up. Use Dr. Earth and follow the recommended rates on the back of the package. What vegetables do you recommend to grow that would be very good in very sandy, sandy soil? Well, first you want to continue to build up your soil by adding organic matter, compost, uh, shredded leaves, chemical-free seed-free grass clippings to build that co- that top layer of soil up. If you're growing in very sandy soil, uh, it's going to take more water. Nutrients is going to f- uh, drain through the soil quicker because it doesn't retain the moisture as well. But some good things you can grow are beets, carrots, radishes, uh, herbs like rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano, 
Onions are good uh, based on the right time of year. Garlic is good if you're going to grow it in the fall or early in the spring. Potatoes work well. Perennial bed of asparagus is good, as well as turnips, and that's just a few of uh, many different vegetables. But again, we want to build and work that soil up uh, so we can grow more uh, fertile uh, plants and get more nutrient-dense soil and nutrient-dense plants. How warm does the soil need to be in order to plant carrots? Well, 45 degrees minimum soil temperature consistency, and carrots do well in the fall and the spring, typically take about 70 days to reach maturity, and to get a better germination rate on your carrots, plant them and cover them with a board or cardboard for 21 days. That will give time for the seed to absorb the moisture around the soil and germinate better. We have many videos on our website how to grow great carrots. Just go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and search carrot planting, and uh, you'll vary, you'll increase your germination rate by over 80% by doing it. Next question is from Jackie in Philadelphia. How effective is weed barrier in your garden, and should I put irrigation underneath it? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. This is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we've got a question from Jackie in Philadelphia. I'd like to know how effective weed barrier is and should they be putting drip irrigation underneath it. Weed barriers are a great way to help control weeds and warm up the soil in the spring. What's changed over the years is now that there's seven or eight different colors to choose from when you go to select a weed barrier cloth. Black is still the most common, does the best job at warming up the soil, and probably the best job at keeping weeds down as well. But red works actually the best for tomatoes and peppers, and blue can work the best for growing melons. If you use the plastic carefully, put it down, pull it back up in the fall, it can be used for several seasons, which saves you a little bit of money. Adding drip irrigation underneath it is a great idea because when you put plastic over the top, of course, the rain or the overhead irrigation can't get to the soil where the plants are, so you want to be able to control the moisture underneath those plants. Good luck with weed control. Good luck using your weed barrier cloth. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your garden friends, because that's the only way people find out about this program is by you letting them know that it's something that's worth listening to. We're going to go over 10 crops in which you can grow very successfully right now in containers, as well as the importance of bats. And Sarah Barr, author of Foraging for Fruit, will be with us. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that a couple of ways. By going to your favorite podcast providing website, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab or the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the page. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.